Hello and welcome as today's date comes in that of the 20th day of August 2020. It is a Thursday. It is the money ch and this is the money charts channel. All bets trades of the like within each his own risk and their own reward in this video. Looking at silver as well as I'm going to be going over and creating spreadsheet information. I've not done it yet and I'm interested to see what the results are going to be. So I'll, I can explain uh, different ways in which I can use uh, the, the tools of, of uh, spreadsheets uh, to get information mathematically that I'm looking for. So we'll go over that at the uh, second half of this or the final half of the video. All right, daily. We have seen just a phenomenal, phenomenal up move. And way, way back in here, and that's not too, too far back, but it almost kind of is. And that's back in March, month three. We're in, moving into month nine, almost a half a year ago. Silver, although good luck buying it at that price, 12 bucks an ounce. And today, 27.18. And we've had a lot of this resistance in around this 20-ish or so area, like historically and everything. Clear, clear, large break. And right now, for several days, we see this trading amongst the 18 average. So therefore, it's it's in a correctionary phase. And it's doing so after a, a monster large up move. Thus, uh, one thing I like to note within chart analysis is when you have a good break and it's a phenomenal move. Well, if you end up losing control of this 18 and starts to turn down, well, it's been such a great move that you almost want to look at like the weekly chart and well, look at the 18. It's just start. It's just so 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 soaring and. Well, we can put like a horizontal ray at this level of resistance and you got 18 three quarters. This has been a price barrier, if you will, for quite some time within the market. So it is going to be needed to be some sort of correction. But we can already see because of the daily term correction that's going on that what we're having in here is just within this up move straight up, but a little bit of a single red candle and. Well, that's, a, that's showing you the correctionary move. And this overextension just may not be done uh, as of yet. Because again, there's a correctionary move in here. If we even shorten this out further, we can see in here that within the, I guess the hourly, yeah, the hourly time frame will work fine. That this big move up here, the last move, I should say, going from 24 up to 30. There's that big correction, but what's happened since is we've had one higher low, now a second thus far. And within this last run in here, higher high to this, so so far, so good. But because of that, the, the whole upward momentum, if you get above this move while this low is holding, as we see in the intraday kind of session, that we're like 27, like high change, or seven, like three-fifths, like 70 cents-ish or so, two-thirds, 67. Uh, that's a phenomenal move. You see it holding and staying above like 27 in the 30s area, so like 30 and 40s area, even holding a, a quarter as the low that is, and doing that for a decent period of time, like several hours, as we can see on this hourly time frame. Then that would be big, and then you're starting to get to to get to the the signals that okay, we can break this, test that like 30 we had a little while ago, and it's already in a phenomenal, phenomenal move. And we move this to the monthly chart. It's starting to have a nice little overextension, which is what I uh, want to see is really how overextended are we? Because it's good to note when these bull markets go, they can go. So there's an early stage of getting above the 18 and it goes up to here, correctionary phase. So there we are breaking out above the 18 and then it's just a phenomenal move. So what was the high at this point? Where do we have to go? But, but notice that you have a decent move, correctionary point, and then your final, we call those blow-off tops is one term that people like to use. Uh, this isn't the start of any blow-off top area. This is the start of a move area, I would think. And to do this on the volatility that it's doing and, this, and the largeness of this move, I think is phenomenal. And even these failed moves here, here, uh, not so much here, but definitely even on the shorter term here, are large the breakout move in here you can see how big overextended this is I, I, I'll be curious in a bit to see how extended this was against the 18 in comparison of course to this because I'm, again I'm seeing this on a start of a move situation so the big volatility that happens after it's already been up for quite a while yeah that could be interesting points of saying maybe we're reaching the overextendedness and then we had this nice little fast like this was a tremendous move in here correctionary play here and then this move in here was really big. So all the time, silver has moves that are in the upward trend. 
it, there has been a lot of decent upward size moves. And then again, the cup and handle formation this chart has that a lot of people on this channel love. There's your up move, and then you make this to the higher low. You reach previous high, 2011 reaching 1980, and then you have a, a retracement lower with a significant higher low to the previous one. And then you have your move back to previous high when you break. You got to break that to say it's a legitimate pattern and it's ready to go. So and that's another way ways of saying that when this thing gets like north of 60, 65, 70. Oh, baby, this thing, the train is, I mean, the, 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 it might be just leaving right now, but it's got a long ways to go still, I believe, getting here. And it's still got a decent ways to go when we're at like 60, 65. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to spreadsheet. And what I got is a spreadsheet. I've had the spreadsheet for quite some time. I've just updated the data in here. As the last time I left off for data was... Are these dates? I have to adjust these years. It says 2020, but it's as accurate. So I had dates up here up to May. This is May, then June of 2013, and then... This would be May of 2014, June of 2014. So this is the year 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's been this long since I've used it. I've Whatever this, what's this formula? Equals previous number subtract. This is volatility, okay. So I'm just going to just copy and paste this just for something to do. Because volatility did take a decent dip lower. Then, of course, it's starting to increase. So we're going to see these... Uh, yeah, see, there's that dip lower in volatility that I was just mentioning a few seconds ago. And, and, look, and then, ooh, look at that 51%. What, what, this happened in... When did this happen? This was April, May. Okay, why do I have extra data? This is... Why did it, it pasted it twice? I don't know. This is not real. So yeah, the 51% is what started. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So now we got all the data in here up to, and I, I'm going to redo the left-hand side at some point, but this is the month August, the year here at 20. Oh, I already had it too. Okay, well, so what this is here, is no it's not this is just stuff that i wrote in i don't even need this okay i want to see how much this is extended from the 18 average of highs now i'm just going to take this information that i have in here because it goes all the way back to january of 1968 and i'm going to make a new spreadsheet and i'll just paste the data here there we have it I'm going to push a button here. Just actually, could I do it? I'm trying to. Okay, this is going to might screw up the screen a bit because I have no choice. No, it didn't. There we go. Okay, so we got the data, but I need the 18 average of highs, and I use a front weighted, which is a very extensive calculation. It's so if I want to know what the average, this is the average of highs. So I take, in this one, I want to take if I want to know what was for this period, I take this period multiply 18. This multiply 17, 16, 15, this one by 14, 13, and so on. And then divide it by the entire sum, which I believe, and I'll find out soon if it's 171. Now, I don't, I've already done the formulas and everything. This is another spreadsheet that I got. And I did this a long time ago, too. And this is what I would use to make my old spreadsheets back in the day. So this is the old school spreadsheet of silver. Had the little thing, like this is 2016, that's... Uh, uh, in that time. That's when silver was 20 bucks, obviously up since then, but it went down, up all that stuff. And this is what I used as a representation of the Bollinger Bands. And I didn't like how Bollinger Bands was like, oh my goodness, it's overextended. It always like majorly sp pikes through, sp uh, spikes through them. So I liked how I did this one to actually increase it so it was harder to hit or it was, up, it was larger and lower than where the traditional Bollinger Bands were. And then there's my 18 average of highs, lows. And I even had the closes in there in the middle at the time. I have no, this was probably a running average. Yeah, this is a running average from the low. I, I, that was a pretty cool. I don't use them much. And unfortunately, when I use TradingView, I've tried to look at like volume weighted average, which is practically maybe a bit better of the same thing, which says what the average price since a current point, but then volume, it actually considers what the volume is and then it adjusts it towards such. But anyway, 
I'm looking for the 18 average of highs, lows, and closes, which of course I use in this spreadsheet. So the formulas for it would be, let me just, this one, see if you look up on here, there's all the big formulas in here. So this would be the high, the low, and the, or the high, low, and close. And I really only need the high, but I'll just got all three of them just to uh, have them. And this is on column R. When these are column C through F. So in this, let's just delete this row or column. So now there's C through F. Okay, so let me just verify that's, yep, that is in the correct spot. So I'm just going to copy and paste this all the way through. So again, when you look at the formula for this, well, it's just a whole bunch of, Okay, it might be a little easier to read there, although I don't think it's supposed to be T22. It's supposed to be, anyway, it's like F18 multiply 18, eight, and then one before, the, uh, and then just 16, 15, and so on, and then divide the whole thing by 171. So I can just copy and paste this information all the way down, and I'm just undoing stuff when I made mistakes here sometimes, but... It's been a lot of months. I'm sure I've been hasn't been this many exactly. So what I want to see is how extended this is from the 18 average of highs. And just an interesting thing I could do. I can go like this, and if I were to delete these columns in here, then the spreadsheet's not going to screw up this formulas, and that'll be just easier to work with. So this is the highs, and I want to know how much. Like it is above, below, things like that. So I can do a formula and maybe do equals. So we want to know what the current price is. Subtract the 18 average of highs. And we can see it's below it at this point. And then we'll divide it by the 18 average of, uh, no, we'll divide it by the close. I believe, yeah, it's, I think, yeah, because then we got negative 19% in here. And I can, just for fun, I can put the uh, font or, and do a percentile. So now I can just copy and paste this through me. And these numbers can go up and down. I'm going to see what the numbers are at the very end. For, but right now, we are above the 18 average of highs by 26.5%. You know, that doesn't seem like that's that large of a number. And it wasn't that long ago we were down below it at 25 and 16%. So then, let's take a look at where it was in 2011. And then where it was when it broke through that 2011 move, which would have happened around 2004. Same thing with 1980. Let's take a look at its upward peak numbers. And then it's real, really, it's two breakout points. What it was like at the start, right around what, 1976 or 77-ish area, as well as most certainly around the 1972, 73 area. So with that being said, I'm going to push the page up on my keyboard until we get to some key numbers. And I mean, a lot of these were negative. We got, so 25%, it was, yeah, so we're at yeah, 25, 26%. So here's negative 30 on a, uh, what, we're back in 2013, so I might as well have the dates ready to go there. That's where. So it got up to 39% on the high. And then 2013, 20, 26%, like November, December, or, or September, October, November, December. So as it was breaking out from that level, it was hitting 20, 26%, and it was doing so in October, 30, October, like October November, when it was hitting 24, 26. So a lot of it right now has matched that level within that breakout. But of course, our first one, as we can look in here, again, 
did start with a uh, 23 followed by a 25. I mean, that was its first two moves. And in itself, where am I pushing? I'm pushing. Yep. So back to uh, 2011, I know the breakout was uh, like August, September, or around 2010. So it went from like 5, 13, 20, 26. So a more of a general like, and it was slower moves. I can remember, and my videos we even talk about it too, even bad things. I did mention it within this channel that it was like a lot of like two, three, four percent days was just grinding its way up. Like notice we've been nothing of monstrous, monstrous proportions. And even so we can see the move of 2011 got up to 39. It's going to be interesting to see how it's going to look in 20 or 1980. But before then, I want to see how it's some of the other ones. We had 20, where are we at? 2009, we had 20, look at those minus 70, minus 50% below it when it had its big move in 2008, minus 71%. So you've ever seen something like that? Like, oh, do I buy when it's at negative 27, negative 41, negative 70? Uh, I did, but yeah, it's up to you. Uh, 23, 14, and then 14% occurred during the uh, top when silver hit $21. Nothing of a fantastic move. And then we had a whole bunch of them we can see in 2006, consistently 11, 18, 15, 24. That was just exceeding well above the 18 average of highs, getting above. Uh, so where we are now, it, is, it was at 31% before. So we definitely have been over, more overextended even in 2006. Okay. And the fact that the uh, that was a second, we can see that was a second tier run because what happened in 2003? We got 6%, 13, 14, 17, 27% above the 18 average of highs. And then you can see the correction occurring after that. But that's how it started. Like, oh, let's do like, we go like 5% above it, 4, 3, 1, but really from the 1.41%, which is uh, right in here. It goes 6% above 13, 14, 17, 16. So you can see that slower type of move. I mean, we're destroying that move. It's a much bigger move. So if the move following what this happened, of course, was such, I mean, we we're of course, should be in line possibly for a much bigger move. Again, let's take a look at, because uh, we're going to see a bunch of negatives and not up so much until we now go back up to 1980. And just to uh, fill suspension, I'm just going to scroll it up from this way and do page down because I want to, see the start of this move and then see how 1980 ended. So there we can see 1971, we were well below the 18 average of highs. And then it got up in 1972, a 13, 15% move, getting up to 23. In 1974, it got up to 42%. And that was the closing price getting above that too. I can see what the highest price was. You can see at 676. And that's another, and I can even, I'll do that, that calculation again after this. That's another one that's an interesting one. Instead of looking what the closing price was against it, what was the highest price? And that would be higher than 42.16. So I'll do that after, of course, I look at these numbers and then look at 1980. So 42 there, and that's in 1974. I've yet to be, be born, but very soonly I will be. And then all of these, some negative numbers. So we're looking for that next breakout. So this next breakout is the one that's going to take us to that 1980 high. Because we can see we're in 1976. And as it goes, it was a small grind higher in this case. And we got it up to in 1979, 16%. And then we can see it got up to like 47, 58% above the highs. There's 25% right here in August 31 when it was $10. And a lot of people then would have been saying $11, that's way too high. Yet the following month it goes up to 18. And even then it's way too high. Then of course it goes even higher there after that. So that instead of doing what we did here is we did close. Let's... Now change the F to column. Here, let's do this one. So now it's column D18, which is high, the highest price that month has. Subtract uh, the, is it I? I18, which is
yeah, the 18 average of uh, highs divided by the previous close. Yeah. So at that point, that's what I'm using. So at that point, the market was up that much. Or should I be doing this against the 18 average of, and this is one reason why I should have probably prepared this a bit, but I just want to show raw analysis too. Should I be dividing? If I do this again, Well, this seemed to work as I'm looking for, so no, this is fine. I'm just getting like a little brain freeze here at this time. So these numbers change a little bit. So I'm looking forward to on the up moves. So do these 15 and 13s go higher? A little bit. So it tells you at the highest level, the highest point it would have got above it. So there's 25, 26%. Okay. So what I like to do just to do things fast sometimes is I'll just go in here and I'll just put a uh, put a bunch of numbers in here. Okay, so we got up to 61% and let's uh, scroll down and we'll pretty much end the video soon. There's 100% it got above it. And 1980, so it got 100% above the 18 average of highs. And it even was in here too at 35, and it caught up to it. So it got up to it, and here's that 25% number here too, getting up to 57 and stabilizing and just continuing its moves all through like October, November, December. But no, I mean, these numbers are off because of this here. I mean, that's in March. It's not above it on March. So let's do, we've got to do a minus close. So let's just, meh. one thing you can do to make it easy is just equal to highest price. I mean, this should be just the easiest way to do it, divided by 18 average of highs. That's da, da, da. and I need this in number four, number format. Okay, so let's. to equals one minus, well, that's it, we need, no, equals this number minus one. And we put that into percentage form. And this is kind of normal for me to be able to like have this happen at times. I can either and then usually I in the more more times than not I get it right at the end. Okay. This should be more accurate. And of course I'm looking at the number I want for the highest extension that it gets. So there's sixteen percent, hundred percent against it in nineteen seventy four. And yeah, now these are starting to look a little bit better. And I wonder how many math geniuses knew the whole time I had it wrong. Anyway, we have, I mean, these are big, big numbers in here. 1979, so it peaked at 183%. The original move, I mean, when we got, let's just see, where do we stand now for this number? Forty, fifty percent. Okay. And we had the little spark off move here. That's good to know.
So we're there's 40% right there too. And that was when silver was $3.87 up to 4, we'll say. Back in 1974. And you'd be like, "Oh, $4, look it was back like $2, $1, always a buck and a quarter or whatever." Way overextended. Then it goes up to like this point in here and and it cools off. And then as we see in here, 183%. And several months just staying well extended above the 18 average of highs. When we look at it from this perspective, it gets above it for the first time. Oh, well, for the first time, but since the decline in here, where pretty much it was at it, but it's above it in October of 1977 and it stays above it every month until that run is over so it's a little above at 12 percent so yeah it was, a, it was a long slow run that happened and then when it really picked up in here it, it was a nice full-blown move and again 100 like close to 200 percent above the 18 average of highs or whatever the 18 averages of highs is at not quite 3x of that number and then these big moves in here. So let's now go back and again look at 2002, 2008, and so on and so forth. And this is the numbers that I'm looking at. I probably should be bolding it just to make it easier to read. It does not much. Anyway. So really not much to look at until the start of 2000. And so there's your original move, getting like a little bit of a play. And then tier level number two, which was 2006. Okay, a bit higher, getting like 57% above. And then it never had that phenomenal move again until, oh, 2010. In 2010... We got, here's your 45% at $37, but it's big move. And it was only uh, one that had a correctionary move over the last several years. And the final moves are usually going to be the bigger ones. And well, 71% is what it hit. And that's another reason why, I mean, I can, just looking back, I still wasn't entirely sure if 50 was going to be, although I knew it was favored to be a level of resistance and such. And then to what degree, because I know whenever it breaks it, it's going to have a phenomenal play. And seeing how this is the start of a move, we're at the, like the small moves here. That's the small moves, the 16, 10, 20s. And then getting above it to this, like breaking it to this 40, 49, that I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see this go to like 100, 120, 140. So now going back to the charts... What we can see here is we have a very highly steadily rising 18 average of highs in at 20. Well, doubling that is 40. But this thing, again, is intensively rising. Once a week and a half comes in and we move into September, well, the, and I can calculate this really quickly right now, the 18 average of highs is going to increase. So in doing such, let me just put in, well, let's just say it goes to, let's just write in 29 in here. And if, say, the price, anyway, let me, why didn't that number change? Oh, yeah, because it's using the highest price, obviously. So you can, just going to $50 would make it go to, that, to 114 But as it goes, if we open the month, let's say, at 29 and we're in that area, the 18 average of highs is going to be in at, up, well, it's right now 1995. It's going to go up to $21. And then if the price is starting to rally, that the, the highs will go up with it because it's going to multiply that number by 18. So if it goes to 40, then the 18 average of highs would go up to 22. And, and it, yeah, as I'm thinking, it, a little break above 100%. It does seem as if $50 is probably going to happen pretty damn near soon, actually. I mean, whatever, if it does or doesn't, but I'm just yachty yachting with the spreadsheet if if this has a, if, if you can get anything out of this, I don't know if you can or not. Probably not. For some people, probably yes. Anyway, have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.